So first question I want to ask you, who do you think will improve the most this season? I have two answers. I have an answer of who I think will show the most improvement this year, most likely, realistically. And I have an answer of who I think, if they improve the most, what happens? Um, I think Cade. I think Cade will improve the most this season. I don't necessarily think, like, all of a sudden he's just going to be, like, you know, 10 times the player he was last year. I don't think that's really the case because I think the player he was last year was actually an all-star level player. I think it just looks differently this year. I think when you put him into different contexts where his game is the priority, where it's his team, you know what I mean? Like where it's seen as Mm -hmm. we have Kate as our number one priority, like very clearly. And we want to do the things where we are prioritizing his development because he's still a young player who is developing. He's going into his fourth year, but really technically his third year of full-time basketball um, in the NBA. And I think having guys around him that really complement his game, like a Malik Beasley, like a Tim Hardaway Jr., Simone Fontecchio, who he didn't really get to play with much this year because Simone got um, injured with like the toe injury. So he, he missed a lot of time. They barely played together. Tobias Harris, um, even a guy like Paul Reed, I think, like is a, is a great compliment because he's he's a guy who can still switch out. You know, it's it's not mm-hmm. a lot of shrinking the floor anymore, and I don't think you're going to see all those screenshots where Cade's driving into the lane and there's like three or four guys around him. Um, I think you're going to see less of that, if like any of that, this year. And I think that's really like it seems like the bar is way down here, but like the fact that that's not going to happen this year, I think you'll see just how special Cade Cunningham is. And I think if this team makes a lot of strides, Cade will be in that front and center, like back to kind of where he was positioned draft uh, around draft time, like in 2021, where he was seen as like this blue chip prospect. And, you know, I remember uh, Bleacher Reporter, House of Highlights, whichever one, uh, they did an interview with Cade around draft time where they're like, you know, the year before it was like LaMelo report because they just constantly posted LaMelo. I think Cade has that type of potential where he can be a player that like the media kind of loves. He, he has media darling potential. It's just the fact that he's been in the least media friendly city, me, least media friendly team. You know what I mean? Like it's just he hasn't really been put in that position. So I think this year of all the years in his career thus far in the NBA is his best year to be that type of media darling. Um, and then as far as who I think if they improve the most will impact the ceiling of this team. I think it's Jalen Duran. Um, If Jalen Duran makes a leap this year defensively, and I'm not even just talking about offense, just straight defensively. If he puts in work defensively to consistently show effort to be a, at least negative to plus defender rather than a neck, like a negative defender. I think he is, genuinely like the X factor here. I think his health and I think his defense are the two biggest things here. If he can stay healthy and if he can be a neutral to plus defender, this team ceiling goes from like, I don't know, wherever anybody has it currently to like, in my opinion, a, a play in lock. I think they are a play in lock. If Jalen Duran is both healthy and improving on defense. And I, I remember, um, Shout out to James and Vincent, James Edwards, Vincent, uh, Vincent Goodwill. They do the um, Detroit Players podcast, which is a great listen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not going to steal any of their scoops or anything, but yeah, I do like I. The, and again, listen to them; it's worth buying. But it's been revealed, like during, like a lot of people discuss, like is his health, like was his health the reason, like why he couldn't, you know show effort on defense and like why he his, his effort on defense wasn't the same according to 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 them it was not it was yeah. just an effort thing and i i think him maturing him coming into year three and i think him having a defensive minded coach who's seems like someone who's really like don't get me wrong passionate and and a player friendly coach but he's really going to get on you about defense Having a guy like J.B. Bickerstaff around, I, I think, will be a great compliment to, to Duran's game. And I think if he can be that neutral to plus defender, this team season more so resembles the first three games of last or three or four games of last season versus the rest of last season. Because it's genuinely yeah. difference there. 
is obviously like a lot of roster movement, et cetera. But in those games where the Detroit Pistons were three and one legendary run, right? Um, Jalen Durham was like the guy everybody was talking about as like yeah. a guy who started making a leap. He was seen as like, is this the next best, you know, big in the NBA, like outside of like Wemby is like this, the guy, like, is he going to be the best center in the Eastern conference? Like that mm -hmm. was a genuine question like is he going to be like the next big center in the eastern conference because the east doesn't like have anybody really outside of like mobley um that has the potential to carry like the big position for for years to come now they have guys like alexander Saar, um but still like duran still has that type of potential and i think if he's able to remain where he was if not better than like the early part of last season i think the ceiling of this team improves drastically i i do agree with you i i would say mine isn't Cade and mine isn't Duran. I have a SAR. Okay. I think a SAR, I know like you kind of look at the what he had last season, and I think it's kind of like a a cop out answer, if you ask me, because like eight points a game and like if he goes from like eight to twelve, like yeah, he probably improved the most of the season. But I I think him working with Fred Vincent, the way Trajan is like kind of talked about like him being in the, the gym every day and like every picture I see of asar he looks bulked up it looks like he actually grew a couple inches too like the picture at summer league where he's next to Cade, they're both six six but asar looks like he's six eight now like he looks a lot taller um i don't know if he, he did grow but um that that would be a plus for the pistons but i i think he's going to take a leap i i think jb bickerstaff isn't just going to throw him in the corner like monty did i think he actually has like a clear cut plan of how he wants to use him so my answer would be um asar but to your point if Jalen duran takes a step defensively yeah it's a play-in team he blocks like a shot two shots a game 100 percent could be a play-in team and uh it could affect the team because he's due up for a contract extension he's to say he can't get 100 million dollars and that's like a, that's a major factor that i feel like and it, it doesn't necessarily get talked about a lot with players but honestly it plays a really huge factor these guys want to get paid at the end of the day these are jobs and they want to make as much money as possible. And Jalen Duran is coming into a position now where his name was floated around in like trade rumors and, you know, all these types of things this past season. And although right now, like he's seen as like a building block for this team, he knows I don't like that's not necessarily guaranteed if like his effort on defense and, you know, his, his play doesn't necessarily improve. Jalen Duran's still incredibly young, but I think he's kind of realizing like he wants to be here and he wants to like, make as much money as possible i think probably the same with the guy like Jaden ivy like at the end of the day players want to make money and i think winning is always number one priority but before winning sometimes comes securing your future because this is life-changing generational wealth that these mm -hmm. players can obtain and i think if you can do your absolute most to obtain that and if you're in a position to you're going to do the most so i i think like there's a there's a reason there's a thing called contract your players like granted Jalen Duran still has another year on his contract after this that extension do, can happen after this coming season so I think that's that's a thing to watch I think that's a thing to watch for really any player from that 2022 class is like are they going to prioritize that and it, it's 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 something to watch for sure yeah I mean I, I've kind of told uh people that listen to this podcast like storylines are going to be Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran this year because of the contract years like I would pay attention to both of them, see how they do, see how they progress, see how uh, they react to getting a, a brand new coach again. I think that's going to be like what their third coach in like three years, third which is wild years, to think yeah. about. But um, I, I like where your head's at with Cade and Duran. I, I just, um, I don't know how much more Cade can improve to the point where it's just like, oh, wow, like let's put him in a most improved player award. And, type and of that's the thing. I think I think his improvement isn't necessarily something that's going to jump out to us, like people yeah. who watch the Pistons every year. Um, I think it's going to be an improvement thing where like he can go from 22 to like 24, 25 points a game, and he'll be in that most improved player discussion simply just because the team got better because yeah. people weren't paying attention before. So I think improve is kind of just a, a word used as how they're viewed you know what i mean gotcha. they're how they're viewed will improve not necessarily how they play 
yeah, it's not so much it's like a box score thing. Like you can improve yeah. without scoring a single point. Like you can improve with being like a, a leader or more vocal or stuff like that. So I, I get where you, get where you're going at with it. Mm-hmm.